yeah, God is so good. We're just seeing him do so many wonderful things. And there's a moment of distinctions that I like to share with the body because I want people to celebrate those moments. And so, uh, Sarah Parrish, would you please stand? This past Monday, Sarah received a promotion in the Air Force to Major. This is Major Sarah Paris. Major Sarah Paris. And she gathers her, her children every time she's in. She's stationed out of Homestead, Florida. And so we celebrate you, Sarah, and we thank God for what he's doing. Worship Plus. What's, what am I saying? Why do I take all month to say it? Because I... As she just said, people can't hear on one Sunday. It takes at least, it basically takes three Sundays for people to, to get it. And uh, the plus is everywhere. I've seen it everywhere. ESPN Plus, Disney Plus, Apple TV Plus. This week I saw Kroger Plus. I was getting gas and a little screen come up, Kroger Plus. I said, everybody's jumping on because they're trying to say the value of the plus means that you're no longer basic. You're premium. You get premium service. You get a premium product. It means better. It means extra. I want to call for worship plus beyond more than just a moment on a Sunday morning, but a moment of saying, God, you have the best of me. You have the premium of my life. You have, Lord, my extra comes your way. Uh, often the Lord will use metaphors to speak tremendous truths Paul's trying to communicate that all that God has given us as seed, God, like a farmer, is the first farmer whom uses through our life. He gives us seed, and he says in 2 Corinthians, God's the one who provides seed for the farmer. What, what is seed, what's seed used for? Why does he give the farmer seed? So he can have some bread to eat. But he can also sow that seed so that he can have more bread to eat. So he can also sow that seed so he can sell his harvest to bless his farm because he's given him capacity. Every, everything that God has given in our life, every talent, every gifting, every ability that God has given to you. And I, I'm, I'm a farmer. I'm farming people's talents and abilities. And I'm, I'm calling out a writing ability and saying that you have more than just putting words on chapter. There's a, there's a message that's going to come out of that moment in your life. And I, I call out the talents that people have. Why? Because there's seed in your life to bless your family, to bless you. Every time, every resource, everything you have is seed that you might eat, but you might also sow why? Because he says this, in the same way God provides. Has anybody in this room, can you say God has provided? And what you were provided 20 years ago is not as adequate because he has to increase your resources. He will provide and increase. Everybody says increase. Well, two, three of you want to increase. The rest of y'all just hang on and We'll let you get out and run to get you some biscuits or something. Come on now. Increase. I want, I want to increase the seed of my life. I want to see what God can do with my resources and, and produce what? A great harvest of generosity in you. Let me read this again. He will provide and plus your resources, then produce a plus harvest of plus generosity in you. Yes, you will be plus enriched in every way so you can always be generous. And when you take your gifts to those in need, they'll thank God. We uh, went from one campus in Mexico City. I don't know what people understand what we do with Kingdom Builders, but now through Pastor Russell, who is overseeing our Hispanic ministries, uh, we've got not one now, we've got another area we started working with in Mexico City, and now it's turned into two more. So now we are up to three more. And I just went last week to North Georgia for the fourth Caucasian. We have six Hispanic and four English-speaking. We're up to ten congregations gathering, worshiping God. The increase of the seed we're seeing increase in the most desperate of times. In the most chaotic of times, we're seeing advance. We're seeing advance. And we're doing it how I don't even can explain. <laughs> Isn't that just like God? 
Well, you tell me how you can put a, a seed in a ground, dab a little bit of water on it, let the sun hit it, and it grows. Come on, it's only God who grows. King David responds to God after the prophet had, had said to him, aren't you going to go worship God? He stopped the plague on your life. 70,000 men are, have lost their life. And this is in 2 Samuel 24. But he says, aren't you going to stop? and have a moment of worship, you know what Sunday should be? Th saying, I'm going to stop my week and my rhythm, my recreation, my work, and my whatever I do, because I need to go tell God, I, I thank you for keeping me for another week. And God the prophet says to him, aren't you going to go worship the Lord? He goes, but I saw that death angel out there on that field. He said, yes, on that place where he stopped, the plague on my life. I want to worship on the place where he stopped the plague. I, I had a, someone uh, bring up to me, they, they mentioned Dublin, Virginia, actually the, the, the Blacksburg, Virginia area. And I says, oh, I know exactly where it's at. He goes, do you know? I said, oh, yeah. Every year as a teenager, I went and got saved in Dublin. <laughs> yeah, I'm concerned about my kids coming home and talking about getting saved all the time. Who cares? They let them get every experience they can get experience. Don't worry about the theology. Just let them keep coming back, keep coming back. But I, I, I thank God for Dublin because every time I get close to the Pentecostal Holiness Campgrounds, as an AG kid, as an Ascent of God kid, I didn't care what the label was or the sign out front. I had an experience on the property. We didn't have camp property, so we rented it from the Pentecostal Holiness, and I go from the top, you know, 15, 16, I, I go there, and I pull off, and if they got it gated, I climb over the gate, and I go, and I find the tabernacle, and I kneel down, because I want Jesus to know I'm thankful for stopping the plague on my life, on that ground, on that ground, even when I didn't want to go, and my mother made me go. I just wish I was, boy, I thank God I wasn't born in a day when you could tell your parents what to do. Dear Lord, I'd have destroyed myself. I know you can today, you know. I thank God. My, I, was, I was more afraid of God than my mother. God would forgive me, but my mother would take me out. And all she needed was the nod from my father. Okay, I don't know about this day, you know. But I thank God. On that ground, David, go worship God. Go worship he saw the death. He goes and worship, and a man meets him and says, hey, Oh, king, you have my land, have my oxen, have my, have, have my plows. What, what, what do you want? He goes, No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I, I'm going to buy everybody. I insist on buying all this. And this is the great statement. I will not offer to my God that which costs me nothing. It's the difference between being a fan or a follower. A fan, oh, yeah, fans worship. You know, fans worship LeBron James. Fans, you've heard it. People, fans worship politicians. Fans worship, you know, Elon Musk. P fan, people worship personalities and things. But a follower, you are committed to follow that one for, the, all, for all the days of your life. And, and then somehow we call social media followers. I don't know if I want to follow some of those. Are y'all with me or is this too fast for you? Come on now. This is the introduction, for God's sake. You've got to help me here. And then Pastor David calls us to selfless worship. Selfless worship. being self, We are born self-focused, and we're moved to selflessness in Christ. I love that word, and I appreciate it. I'm going to, I'm going to share a little something next Sunday possibly for Pastor David. He's probably he's up in the north Midwest area. He's probably in some snow this morning. I don't know. But today, we come across Jesus. I love the moments when it says, one day Jesus. And he calls, talking about his disciples in Matthew 4, comes upon James and John. They're sitting in a boat repairing a net. Repairing a net. Number one, the only boat you're sitting in is recreational boats. But this is not a recreational boat. This is a fishing boat. They're sitting in their potential they're sitting the potential, but it's not going nowhere because the, the, the tool they have 
needs some repairing, some equipping. It's the Ephesians 4 word, equipping. Why, why is that important? Because equipping is repairing something for preparing something for something more. All of your life is going to be about God repairing something to preparing something for something more. How many knows that you can lose your resources through your fingers? It can slip through your life. Your time and your talents and your abilities can be lost through the holes that are getting by. So there's, we're in a constant repairing something for preparing something for something more because he always wants something more. And it's Matthew 4. It says, one day, one day, I like this, one day Jesus walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, throwing a net into the water for they fished for a living. Here's where we establish what they do. They fished for their living. It was their identity as fishermen. Fishing for a living, Jesus called out to them and come follow me. Come follow me. Come follow me, Jesus said. I'll show you how to fish for people. They left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with his father Zebedee, repairing their nets, mending, repairing. The, the repairing word can include anything from taking the garbage out of the net because sometimes the garbage gets caught up in the net and, and sometimes we need the garbage out of our nets. Y'all going to let me preach this or you're going to look at me like I'm a third grade teacher that had no clue. Come on. Come on. Sometimes, you know why I need to come back to church? You know why we coming? Because we need clean. We need repair. We need, oh God, help me that this week I don't lose any ability to be blessed and strong for you and to be able to increase my capacity to worship you and respond to your goodness and your grace in my life. Help me, Jesus, with the net of my life. Every talent, every ability, every attention, every resource. And, 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 and you know, everybody wants to make something like like this all about money money's a part of it I'm not I'm not I'm not in any way gonna skirt the issue about that but it's not just money it's everything you are it's everything it's every resource that God it's it's every relationship you have it's every ability that God wants to place in your life and it says they they were what they were throwing them out there and they they they, they left the repair and he called them to come too they immediately followed him leaving the boat and their father behind Luke chapter 5, another one day, and then we're going to pray and begin. Man, this is a long intro. One day is Jesus. One day. <laughs> one day with Jesus changing. One day as Jesus is preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. Great crowd. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. So we have repairing nets. We have washing nets. We have casting it's all the process. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push out into the water. So he sat in the boat, and he taught the crowds from there. So not, the boat is not always engaged, and not always. There's a moment when we got to let, come on, Jesus, get into my boat and teach me. Teach me, Jesus. Get into my proximity. Get into my, let me have, oh, God, enter into my space. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it's deeper, and let down your nets to catch some fish. Simon's response, Master, I think right now is when he lifted up his voice. Master, uh, we worked all night, all last night. We didn't catch a thing, but, it, but if you say so, it's a great word right there in one translation. Uh, Lord, you see us? <laughs> you see what we're doing? Nevertheless, if... if if, I, if you say so, I'll let down the nets again. And at this time, their nets were so full. And at this time, and this time, their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat. And soon, both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, this is a worship moment, in case you don't know what this is. This is a worship moment right here. Oh, Lord, please forgive me. Fell on his knees and said, oh, Lord. In other words, Master, Master, for, forgive, please leave, leave me. I'm a sinful man. You'll never, ever have any other response that the closer you get to God, you'll see how holy he is and how much we need him. And you'll feel, you'll feel the, 
the depravity of the soul is what it's called when you realize I am nothing apart from you. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. Awestruck. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Father, help us now. Lord, this is so deep in my soul. I, I don't know if the time ever will allow me to really fully. So would you please let every person in the room, those that are worshiping online, receive what they need to hear to make a difference in their life and bless them, raise them up, and stir them, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There it is. <laughs> Jesus said to Simon, come on now, cast your net, throw your net out. Let's go out, let's go out in the deep and let your nets down. And I, I don't know. It, it's so easily we can read it, but his words almost might seem like he was mocking them. Almost like he was trying to say to these sweating, exhausted fishermen. Why? Because they've been fishing all night. Because when you cast nets, you'd cast them not in the daylight. Not even Nazarene carpenters ought to know better than that, much less fishermen. And, and so he says it, and he says it from the shore in the boat where everybody hears him say, come on now, you, you, you launch out there. Be, come on, let's, can't. now what did he teach right before he did that? I wondered, that's one of my questions for heaven. I got a list of them, and that's one of them. Jesus, what was you teaching that day? Was you teaching on faith? I believe he was. Maybe he was teaching on obedience. Maybe he said, I want you to obey me when it doesn't make sense. See, it's one thing to obey God when it makes sense. It's another thing to obey God when it doesn't make sense. That's the difference between faith and obedience. Obedience is obey, obeying God when it says, uh, you ought not steal. Well, that ought to make a lot of sense. You, know, you ought to steal because you go to jail. You, you, sh you shouldn't steal. Okay, you shouldn't murder. That, that, okay, that makes sense. We ought to obey that. Yeah, we ought to. But cast the net where you have cast all night long and it doesn't make sense, that's when faith kicks in and say, God, I'm going to trust you even when it doesn't make sense. And Simon Peter had been fishing all night, uh, and he caught how much? How, he caught nothing. He says it by himself. And it wasn't the nice little fishing nets like this, other than similar to this that had weights on it, has a drawstring that I could not find through it. How many knows this is a useless net? And, and, and look at this. Pastor Scott and I, we were looking at this yesterday, and he says, I don't, I don't, he's trying to unsort it. I go, no, 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 don't unsort it, because this has been a whole lot like some of our lives. And my life, I felt my life all tangled up like it. Have you ever had your life feel like you're, you're just all tangled? I'm, I mean a mess. And you got, this would be a miracle to ever get this. You ever been there before? When your life felt like a tangled mess, and you think, God, how are you going to do anything out of my life? How, what are you going to do? And, and, and so they have the heavy commercial, water-heavy, large nets that they, their backs are exhausted, their muscles are screaming. How often they had noticed that empty nets are heavier than full nets. You know what I mean? I mean, work hard and get a, I mean, get a response and get, I mean, get a reward, get blessing on your life. Man, you're ready to go at it again. But work hard and get no results. No result. I mean, it's kind of like I'm telling you, when you're winning, nothing hurts. But when you're losing, everything hurts. You know what I mean? And so having fished all night, you know, when it was possible to catch fish, Jesus is now asking to do the impossible. How do you get over that? How do you get beyond the, the, the moment and do the impossible? And what about all the people on the shoreline? I mean, isn't it always something that God asks you and you shouldn't have, but you opened your mouth and said, God asked me to do that? And, uh, you know, and, and, or you told people, I, I hear, you get a word from God and, and you extend yourself and you, you get yourself out there and tell people, I tell you what, I, I wish I'd have never told anybody I was trying to write a book 12 years ago. Why? Because how's that book going? It's fine. Sure, oh, don't even ask me about that. I mean, I'd walk away. Two times I released that thing to the printer. Two times I had to pull it back and say, no, no. Once I'm grateful that the Lord allowed us to see it. Why? Because, I mean, 
I felt like it was a message that God won out of my life. But I'm going to tell you, he said, it's been a long 12 years for that thing to come out on June 1st. And I, I'm telling you what, it, is a, it was a long journey to get there. And, but I wish I'd have kept it to myself. Because on the shoreline are all those people who heard you say what Jesus said. And, and surely P Peter is in his boat. They know it's his boat. And Jesus is there. And he's, he, who wants to look foolish in front of people? Faith will put you in a position where you look really foolish in front of everybody else in broad daylight. Why didn't he ask him to do it at 3 in the morning or 4 in the morning, but not now? And I can imagine Peter saying, I can hear them laughing. What? What, what did he say? He told, Peter, he told Peter to go out in the water and cast his net. And, and they laughing now. And nobody hated being laughed at more than Peter. And so beyond this very moment, he's tired and discouraged. But no, it's now when you get asked to do at the end of your energy and strength, when you are exhausted and tired, now he's very tired and very exhausted. And, and he's trying to, to, to do something like, I don't know, I'm really not feeling like I should accommodate uh, the nonsense of a Jewish rabbi, but how me? And, and besides, this is my boat. He in my boat. Isn't it amazing how we like, my boat, my house, my car. I'm, I'm, I mean, my, mo my, my back is broken. My t it's my time he's asking about. It, but if you want, now listen, we've all heard it. Maybe you've said what I've said before, things like, I've tried that. That didn't, that didn't work. Maybe you've said, I used, I, I've used all my strength. i got nothing else. i got nothing else to give, nothing else to do. That's the way I felt when I got the call about Armenia. I'd come out of Africa. I mean, I had given it all to Africa three weeks before. Man calls and said, hey, I need you to go to Armenia. We're going to, somebody said, God's going to move into that country. We don't even have missionaries there, but I need a, a few people to go in, and let's, let's do some leadership and stuff. And I said, no, thank you. I'm not interested. I'm, I'm going, and God would have to show me just, I mean, have to give the writing on the wall in the form of a man of God and speak to me right in the middle of a, of a service that he had to show me. And I can't tell you how much incredible blessing to go into a country even before we had AG missionaries and pave the way. Why do I have to be a pioneer all my life, for God's sake? I mean, all my life, Mike, I've been a pioneer. Why can't I go to somewhere where a road's been built? But it's been my life to be a pioneer, clear the way for somebody else. And that moment, I did But I can't tell you how, how strong, how I'm grateful, I'm thankful, second world country. Now I go, there's more Armenians in Los Angeles than there is in the country of Armenia. And now I go there and, and I think... Praise be to God, the net that he caused us to, to feel was incredible. But I was at the end of my strength and said, God, I got nothing left to give. Maybe you said it's too late. Too late. When that window closed, that window, I, I, that moment's passed. You know, I, I know the Lord spoke to me or promised me, but I'm, that's behind me. I, I know. And, and the thing about it is Peter, you know, he decided not until he pointed out how useless it was. Okay, God, I'm going to do this. But you had not done nothing. Okay. Okay, one more time. And he had to get, he wanted to make sure, especially in front of everybody, this ain't my deal, people. This ain't my deal. So he lives it. Okay, we fished all night. I bet he turned toward the crowd and spoke to, you know, Jesus was this way. And he, we fished all night, Jesus. You see, we hadn't caught anything. He had a way. He needed a way to get over his resistance to obedience. He had to get, so he found that word, nevertheless. So what you say? Exhausted, doubtful, <laughs> no doubt, tremendously reluctant. Okay. Nevertheless, came out of his mouth. Never, at your word, because you say so. I'm going to let down this net. And I imagine he gave as much effort as he could muster up just to do it to show the futility of Jesus' words and said, okay, okay, did that, did that. And I don't know that as he threw it, fishing in the day shows what all he knows. 
And the miracle happened. I mean, the miracle happened. Don't read it too quickly. The miracle. He draws the cord slower than usual. And suddenly in that moment, what happens? It's beginning to surface and there's these shiny silver dancing of these fish that are trying to free themselves in broad daylight. You can see it from the shore and everywhere else so much that he has to call for James and John and other boats say, hey, y'all, y'all, you going to stand there and look at me or help me pull this in? And absolutely the moment that throws it in and he sees blessing. I'm telling you, my life is at that moment where I have exhausted myself and one more cast, one more knocking on a wall called it the wall to come down. One more cast of a net brought in a shiny silver stream that I never saw. One more moment of faithfulness before God. One more, God, I'm going the last time to this place in Zimbabwe. I, I'm not going back, but I'm going, and one more time going, seeing a breakthrough that come through. One more moment, oh God, and I'm going to see you do something that was beyond that all you could think or ask, and there is stunned chaos as people have to come around. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. you talking about a joy Oh, I mean a joy at that moment. But let's remind ourselves, obeying him wasn't joyful. The obedience wasn't so joyful. It was, we, sometimes we talk, we rush to the reward, and we forget about the strain of marching through the dark all night long until you get there and victory comes. Oh, he listens, don't he? Explain it to him. Tell him, Lord, this is not the job for me. I need an upwardly mowing, mobile, growing, progressive company. Explain it. Explain it. You, you had said that God had took you there. And now, you know, this is not the marriage for me. I, I'm, you know, I'm not fulfilled. I'm not happy. Yeah, go ahead. But you told everybody that God had brought that person. Come on now. I, 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 the Lord, you want me to forgive who? My boss. My boss. You, Lord, you know what he is. And the Lord says, forgive. God is so big, he knows exactly where the net has to be cast, and he knows what has to be cleaned or what has to be repaired or what has to be restored. He knows, and he puts us in a place where we decide, are we going to be a worshiper, a fan? Well, I mean, we use the word worship for anything and everything, according to what athletic event thing, according to what's the hottest pop star or according to what the hottest moment, the hottest product we worship. We, call, we use the word like that. Isn't it crazy how we use the word worship? Are we going to be a fan of something or a follower of Jesus and worship him and say, Lord, what do you want from me? Have me now receive this moment of strength. I come back, oh God, to worship you plus, to give you the premium of my life, to give me, Lord, I know know that you, that you hear my argument. You know my exhaustion. You know my waiting. You know, oh God, and, and yet you're so silent and you wait and you wait for me to get to the place where I say, nevertheless. See, to obey or not is costly. Either side will cost you. Either side. Each has consequences. Each, if, I, I think how close I was to saying no to Armenia. I mean, we have 2,700 missionary couples in this, this nation out of the assemblies of God. 2,700 couples. And I've just recently, you know, it's amazing when people think you're freed up, you're freed up to, for, for, for what their vision is. <laughs> and, but but it, you know what? I've got a reputation of loving our missionaries everywhere I've been. And so the assemblies of God asked me in, my, in the future, would I consider being the pastoral care with three other individuals for 2,700 missionaries. Pastoral care. In other words, they have my number and can call me for me to pray for them, for me to encourage them. Do I, oh, do, do I not want to stir up, build up, and cheer up 2,700 missionaries and say, God's put you there, help you, strengthen you. How can I pray and join me? Yes, but I, you just, oh, I want to do that. I don't know if you want to pay that price. So don't be asking about somebody else's. God has a net for you. Don't be concerned about, listen, what about your net? What has God put in your life that he wants to put at use for the kingdom of God? For the bless you, bless you. He wants you to eat and eat good. Eat good. <laughs> Absolutely. But he wants you to feed others. 
He wants others to eat from the seed he gives to your life that they might thank God. It says, the, God says, as a farmer received the seed, that they might have be generous and supply others that they might thank God. Given who is thanking God or blessing God from the seed of your life. I feel a holy moment, and I haven't, I haven't even got to the message. What am I going to do? Maybe we ought to just pray. So won't you stand with me right now? I feel the presence of God saying, enough. Maybe you're in the room and you're saying, i gotta, I got to move toward God. I want God to make sure he's repairing everything. I don't want to lose any blessing through the holes in my net. And you just want to come and stand and say, oh, God. Mend my life. Equip me. Repair something that it might prepare. Either you're repairing or preparing for something more. If you, if you want plus, say, Lord, I want to worship plus. I, I don't want to be just a fan. I want to be a follower. Just come and stand with me here as the anointing of God has landed on this place. And, and you feel the work of his presence. And you say, oh, God, I, I want to bring all that I am and all of that you've, the nets you've given to my life. And I said, Lord, they're a tangled mess. Would you, would you do something with them? Or help me, oh God. I've been sitting in this boat so long, people think I'm wanting to go skiing when I need to go fishing. And, and Lord, my boat is, uh, not all of my life is recreational. Oh God, it is to produce. There's something inside. There's talents in people's lives. There's callings on people's lives. Uh, too old? Are you kidding me? Too young? Are you kidding me? Who, who do you say that the creator of heaven and earth has put a time limit and a shelf life on the blessings of God in your life? You say, Lord, here's my life, Lord. Step in my boat, oh God. Show me where to cast the net. Show me I'm, I'm tired and I'm, my back aches and I'm exhausted. And I, 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 God, I, I believe it could be easier, but I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you, Jesus. Help me, oh God. Help me. And you just have the faith of God. God, have the faith of God. What kind of altar call is this, Pastor? Is this for unbelievers? No, listen, forget about the call and those kind of things. Forget about trying to save face in front of people and say, I need him. I need his help. I want blessing to come out of my life. I want strength to come. I want seed to be really. I, I don't want to eat all my seed. I don't want to eat all my blessing to my seed. I want to be able to sow that. I want to cast that. I want to do what God would have. I want, I want to be gifted growing and generous as Jesus' vision. I want the giftings of God to be growing from my life that I might be able to say, Lord, nevertheless, oh man, I wish I could write music and sing songs. I'd write a song about nevertheless. I'd write a song that had something to do with nevertheless. Here, here let me just go to the very ending. Whatever God would ask you to do, and whatever moment that you have to cry, Lord, can you see my condition? And you're asking me what? And every moment that you have to cry, nevertheless, understand this, that on the other end of you casting the net of your life, you will never be the less. You will never be the less. You will always see God do more. You will always see him because he's in control. He's the one. <laughs> and I stand before you, Lord, as we're in the months of me casting these nets one more time. In this place, and those are online, and this, from this position, from this place on the boat, oh God. Oh God, help us now. Help us now. Let's worship for a moment before we pray.